you have to play around with the expression just like you would play around with your girlfriend at home. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. You didn't expect me to come from behind the camera today. Woo. Finally it's time for a differential equation exercise. I'm going to post a lot in the near future, in the next weeks. Um, because most of you guys didn't really like the abstract stuff, so I might as well just so show you some applications of differential equations and how to actually solve some using um, the methods and proofs we have derived before. So that's quite nice, probably, for most of you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with the most difficult differential equation you could ever think of, y prime is equal to 1. It couldn't get any easier, to be honest, except for y prime is equal to 0. But never mind, I would like to include some generalizations in the next videos. So I would like to take a look at a more general case. So why not take a look at y prime being equal to the polynomials of degree n. So i equals to 0 to n of some coefficients ki x to the i. And the results of this video shouldn't be something new to you guys because you should know how to integrate polynomials. But never mind, I will still make a video on that because then we have an nice little list of formulas you can use in your exams or something. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with the easiest method to solve something like this, just integrating both sides with respect to x. We have derived this before, so we can do this. So this is equal to dy dx. And if we integrate both sides with respect to x, also you should integrate this thing right here in the normal case, we are going to end up with, on this side, this is just y, plus some arbitrary constant c, we can bring it to the other side and add it or subtract it to the other constant and we have a new constant. Never mind, we are going to leave this out of the way. And on the other side, well, this right here is just a finite summation. So that means it doesn't pose any problem when interchanging it with the integral sign. Seriously, it doesn't. We can just use the regular linearity of the integral without any restrictions. This time for real small boys, without Papa Fubini or something like that. And also we can bring this ki to the outside. So that means we are going to end up with y being equal to this finite boy. Oh, a finite boy, not an infinity boy. That's a rare thing. ki and the integral of x to the i dx. And well, this thing right here is just an index, not an imaginary unit or something. So we can just integrate this quite easily. So we're going to end up with i equals to 0 to n ki 1 over i plus 1 x to the i plus 1 plus some arbitrary constant c and then we are already done so you can get to this differential equation by just setting your coefficients and stuff like this right and just reducing your sum a little bit to n being equal to 0 in this case and well then you are done you will get this expression right here and now for the next method for the next method, we are going to use you guys' most favorite, and also Chris, boys and Chris, most favorite method, at least at the moment. It's one of my most viewed differential equation type videos. We are going to use power series solution to solve something like this. So at first, we are going to assume that we can write y as just an infinity boy from i equals to zero, doesn't matter what you call this index right here, to infinity of ci x minus x naught to the i. And now we are just going to take a look at this coefficient, this function right in front of y prime. Well, it's just a constant function, so it doesn't matter what value for x naught we're going to plug in, it's going to stay as it is. It's complex differentiable, analytical, at every point x equals to x naught. So why not use zero as x naught to make things easier for us? So we're going to end up with i equals to zero to infinity ci x to the i. Okay, nice. But if you take a look at here, you might notice we have y prime. So we also have to differentiate this. So y prime is now nothing but this infinite sum from i equals to 0 to infinity. And then ci times i x to the i minus 1. And well, we can plug this definition for y prime into here and see what we get. So that means y prime is just the infinite sum from i equals to 0 to infinity ci times i x to the i minus 1 equals to a finite sum. Maybe that, pose, that will pose some problems, we don't know. So i equals to 0 to n ki x to the i. So here's an i missing. 
And here's a little fact. On this side, we have an infinite degree polynomial. On this side, we have a finite degree polynomial. And there's no way to upgrade this right-hand side to an infinite degree polynomial. But what we can do, we can downgrade, reduce this polynomial by choosing our coefficients, our CIs, quite wisely. So why not write this right here out and see what we get? That also means at first we have 0, that's the 0 of member, and then we have C1 plus 2C2x plus 3 c3 x squared plus dot dot dot. I hope you can see a pattern right here. Plus and then we have n plus 1 c n plus 1 x to the nth power plus and then n plus 2 c n plus 2 x to the n plus 1 and then plus dot 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 infinitely many more terms equals to this sum right here. So this is equal to something. Okay, this is not a minus sign, that's an equal. And now you see we would have an nth degree polynomial if all those coefficients cn plus 1, cn plus 2, and so on, uh, so C, cn plus 2, cn plus 3, and so on, would be 0. So this is our condition to reduce this polynomial. So what we can conclude, you want cn plus 2 equals to cn plus 3 equals to dot 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 be equal to 0. So that means we have reduced this polynomial quite nicely. And, and also, we can shift the index a bit and formulate a new sum. So we are now going to end up with, on the left hand side, a finite boy running from i equals to 0 to n of, and now we have ci plus 1 times i plus 1 x to the i, so that's quite nice, so we have i equals to 0 to n and x to the i is equal to a sum running from i equals to 0 to n ki x to the i. And that's why I just said that this is quite nice because if you know a thing or two about sums, you might know if the running index is the same on both sides, and it is, then two sums are equal if and only if their arguments are equal. So that means that's an equivalence relation if those two arguments are equal. And we can ignore this xi right here. We can um, just cancel it on both sides. So what we can conclude, those are equal if and only if ci plus 1 times i plus 1 is equal to ki. ki. And well, i is element of natural numbers, so that means this term right here is never going to be zero, so we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of i plus 1 to end up with ci plus 1 is equal to ki over i plus 1. And that's quite nice because we have found an expression for ci plus 1. Okay. Um, that's not too good because, because we have ci up here. We can't really plug it in at the moment, but we can do some black math magic right here. So let's take a look at this sum right again. So we know that y is nothing but, and now we have reduced this polynomial. And we are going to go up to the n plus 1 degree this time. Just write it out and you will see why this is the way we have to go. So n plus 1 from i equals 0, and now ci x to the i. Now we can bring this zero of member to the outside, so c naught plus a sum running from i equals to 1 to n plus 1, and now ci x to the i. And why not introduce a new index? For example, um, let, I don't know, not k, um, no k, stupid, let j, let j be equal to i minus 1. So that also means that i is nothing but j plus 1, and if we plug in n plus 1 into here, we end up with n minus 1 plus 1, so that's just n, and also if i is equal to 1, we end up with j being equal to 0. So I hope you can see where this came from. This is just shifting the index. It's quite a basic thing. So j equals to 0 to n in this case of c, j plus 1, x to the j plus 1. And now we have a definition for cj plus 1, ji plus 1, it doesn't matter what you call it, and we can plug this in. So we end up with some c0 plus a finite sum running from j equals to 0 to n of ki over i plus 1 x to the uh, j in this case, j <laughs> to the j plus 1. Um, I'm sorry, I mixed that up. They look so similar. And, and then we are done with this technique. So I, I think that's quite nice, to be honest. Uh, this, this took me quite some thinking now. I'm terribly sorry. I, uh, I still hope that this was quite okay of a recording and now for the third method. 
So the next method is one we haven't used in quite a while. We are going to use Laplace transforms on this thing right here. Take a look into the description or something. There will be a link to my Laplace transform playlist if you don't know anything about this topic. So we are going to use Laplace transform on both sides. Now we are going to assume that x is just t. So that makes y a function of t itself. Just to make it time dependent. Let's play physicists a bit. So if we take the Laplace transform on both sides. So Laplace transform of y prime is going to give us s f of s minus y at the point t equals to zero. And on the right hand side, well, we have the Laplace transform of this. Ki is a constant, we can bring it to the outside and this is just a finite summation so we can use linearity of the Laplace transform to just bring it to the outside. So we have this finite sum from i equals to zero to n Ki of Laplace transform of t to the i in this case. So we have changed x to t. And if you have watched my gamma function video, deriving the gamma function, we have derived this Laplace transform there in a quite nice way. So we have this summation i equals to 0 to n ki and this is going to give us i factorial over and then um, s to the i plus 1. That might look weird at the moment but it's going to make sense in just a second. Now we are going to add y of 0 on both sides and, and divide both sides by s, not equal to 0. That gives us an expression for f of s being equal to y of 0 over s plus the sum of i equals to 0 to n i factorial over and this is going to be s to the i plus 2 in this case. So s to the i plus 2 times ki. And now we would like to use the inverse Laplace transform on both sides to get an expression for y with respect to t. So using the inverse Laplace transform on both sides, this left hand side is going to give us y with respect to t. Now we take the, uh, we can use linearity of the inverse Laplace transform to just take the inverse Laplace transform of every term right here because it's additive linear. So the, Laplace, the inverse Laplace transform of y of 0 over s is just going to be the constant itself, so y of 0 plus. And the inverse Laplace transform is linear, just like I said, so we can bring this to the outside, this summation stuff, i equals to 0 to n, ki, and now we have the inverse Laplace transform of i factorial over s to the i plus 2. And how could we get a uh, inverse Laplace transform of something like this right here. Well, we have to play around a little bit algebraically and what we are going to do, we are going to advance this fraction by i plus 1 over i plus 1. So when dealing with Laplace transforms, you have to play around with the expression just like you would play around with your girlfriend at home. Thumb up if you remember. And you see, this right here is going to evaluate to i plus 1 factorial. We can bring this 1 over i plus 1 to the outside and this inverse Laplace transform is exactly going to evaluate to x to the i plus 1, t to the i plus 1. It's similar to this thing right here. Just compare those identities with those we have just arrived. So this is y of 0 plus the sum from i equals to 0 to n ki 1 over i plus 1 x to the i plus 1 or t to the i plus 1 t to the i plus 1 in this case. And this is exactly what we have derived before. So we got the same thing with this being the constant this time and now for the last one. For the last one I would just take a look at the original expression. And I would just like to show you an application of Euler homogeneous differential equations because if you take a closer look what is a 1? A 1 is nothing but y over x to the 0 of power. So this is y over x to the 0 of power and this thing is exactly a function of y over x if you take a closer look. And well there's an equivalent formulation. We can rewrite this as being z prime being equal to 1 over x f of z minus z with z being equal to y over x. 
Okay, cool. So we can plug the value in for f of z. We know that this is just 1 and then minus z. And now we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 minus z. We don't want it to be 0 and then integrate it. So we end up with an integral, z prime, 1 minus z, being equal to the integral of 1 over x dx. You might know this side is going to evaluate to the natural log of x plus some arbitrary constant c. So this is just the n of x plus some arbitrary constant c. Okay, cool. And what is this? Well, you can introduce substitution to make this into dz over 1 minus z. And well, you can introduce another substitution. I have derived stuff like this before, link in the description probably. This is just going to evaluate to the negative natural log of 1 minus z being equal to this stuff. And what we can do now, we can use exponentiation on both sides and see what we get. That's equivalent to saying, so at first we have, so if we bring this minus into here, that's one minus z to the negative one power, so that's one over this chunk. And also I should use absolute values here, or otherwise people are going to complain about me. And if we use exponentiation, we end up with one over one minus z being equal to, okay, so this is, e to the ln x, this is going to give us x times some arbitrary constant, let's call it e schlange, e snack. So x times e schlange. And now we can take the reciprocal on both sides. That's equivalent to saying 1 minus z is being equal to 1 over x times 1 over e schlange, but this in itself is just another constant, so let's call it c. And don't forget what our z originally was, it's y over x. And now we can multiply both sides by x, we don't want it to be zero at the moment. So we are going to end up with x minus y being equal to just c. And well, now we can add y on both sides, subtract c on both sides, and then we are done. So we end up with y being equal to x minus c, and well, minus c is just another constant, so let's call it plus k. And then we are done. So this is just an application of Euler homogeneous differential equations. And I hope you did like this video. If you did like this quite long, I guess, um, exercise video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support the channel, please take a look into the description. There will be a link to my Patreon. I'm doing all of this stuff in my free time, so I would highly appreciate some support from you guys. I'm getting quite tired right now. It's so warm in here and it's cloudy out there and uh, it's still fun to produce videos, but sometimes it's just um, a bit, I don't know, a bit hard. Never mind. Appreciate you guys and up until the next video, have a fun day. See ya.